Hello friends, how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. In today's video, I am so giddy and excited. I'm gonna be doing hopefully the start of a new series as long as you guys end up enjoying it, but I might do it anyways because I very much enjoyed filming this video. Um, I'm gonna be doing kind of a get ready with me slash March reading wrap up. I'm gonna chat about all of the books that I read in the month of March, trying my best to keep this as spoiler free as possible. I give little, a little bit of notice every time I like mention something spoilery, but I tried my best not to talk about spoilers too much. I just wanted to give kind of a general overview and how I felt about the different books that I read. And I'm excited about this. I'm loving reading. I got heavily back into reading mid-February and I'm obsessed. I read 13 books in the month of March and I'm just so excited to share all of these with you. It was a lot of fun kind of reflecting on all these books and chatting about them again. If I didn't do perfect at talking about these books, just give me time. I'm sure I'll get better at describing books with time. This is very new territory for me, um, but I hope my enthusiasm <laughs> comes across really well. I'll have all these books linked down below for you if you feel like checking any of them out. And I'm excited to hear your thoughts about these as well if you've read any of them. And I'd also love to hear what you read in the month of March and like what you're currently reading. Reading. I chat about books lightly in my vlogs, just kind of chatting about like what I'm reading currently. I also mention ones that make it into my favorites videos, but I love this idea of just kind of sitting down and really breaking down everything that I read and my thoughts on them. And it was a really fun time for me. So I hope you end up enjoying this as well. I am obsessed with reading at the moment and I'm just so excited to be delving back in because I used to love reading back in like elementary school, middle school, high school. Like it was my favorite thing growing up. And then I just kind of lost that in adulthood. And I'm so, so happy to have this back. And I hope this ends up being a really fun series, not only for me, but for you as well. Before we get into it, my accessories, this necklace is from Ana Luisa and these plugs are from Love Kills Boutique. Before we get into it, I also wanted to announce that I just recently opened a membership option for my channel. I will have the link down below for you if you wanna check it out. It is totally optional, but if you want to subscribe and support me, you will also get a cute little bat badge next to your name by joining the bat fam. You'll get lots of cute exclusive little emojis to use that were inspired by the pins created with Chloe Shroud Cosmetics, the It's Freaking Bats and Halloween collabs. And you'll also get a members only exclusive video once a month. I am so thankful for those of you who have already signed up. It warms my heart. I feel like it's going to be such a fun way to connect even more with you. And just stay tuned. I'll be posting on my members only community tab very soon, asking for opinions on what you want to see in that members only get ready with me. So yeah, without further ado, let's just hop in, chat about books, play with makeup, all that fun stuff. Hi friends, I'm so excited to be filming. I've been itching to film this video for days, but it was still March. So I wanted to wait until March was officially over and now it's April 2nd. So here I am, we're gonna do some makeup, chat about all the books that I read and it's gonna be a lot of fun. If I don't mention all of the makeup products that I'm using, it'll all be listed down below as per usual. I have already primed. I use the Freck Rich Bitch Primer. I've been obsessed with this the last week. It's so good, like it might be my new favorite primer, honestly. Um, but I did that while I did my brows so that it could sink into the skin. And now we're gonna get into it. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the Fix It Witches series. I read these so fast. The first one in the series is Witch Please. These are by Anne Aguire. I will have all of these books linked down below for you as well in the order that I talk about them. Um, but yeah, Witch Please was the first book that I read in March. It was really cute. I feel like witchy rom-coms are definitely my comfort zone. It's definitely my favorite genre right now. It's got that mixture of, you know, magic and fantasy while also just being cute and silly. And I love a good rom-com. It's easy to read. It doesn't stress me out at all. And it's just, it's fun. These books do have a good amount of spice to them and I quite enjoyed them. So the first book, which please, is through Danica's perspective as well as her love interest, Titus. It kind of switches back and forth between both chapters on kind of who's the main focus of that chapter, like whose perspective you're seeing. And basically Danica's a witch and she's been told her whole life that she had to be with a witch. Like that's one of the main plot points is her grandma is really pushing that she has to marry a witch to keep the bloodline like true and that she'll lose her power. If she gets with a mundane or a non-magical being, I am gonna try to avoid spoilers as much as possible in this chat, but if I get to a part where it's spoilery, I'll give you a warning. 
Um, but then she meets Titus. It's kind of that instant love connection kind of trope, also mixed with the forbidden love kind of trope. Super, super cute, kind of watching it unfold. And just kind of seeing how they basically navigate how they're gonna make this work because through Titus's perspective, he's basically gone through this situation where he feels like he's doomed to be alone forever because every relationship he's ever been in ends in a very weird and unexpected way. Like suddenly they have to move to like Australia or something crazy. So he's convinced that things aren't even gonna last long-term with Danica just because it's never lasted long-term before. And Danica's stressed because she doesn't know how she can even make this work or how she can break his heart or anything like that. So it's just kind of going through that whole journey. It was really cute. It was fun. I found myself laughing at different moments. It was overall a really cute book. I ended up rating this one, I think a solid four stars on Goodreads. I thought it was really cute. It wasn't one that's like my absolute obsession. Like it's not like a five star read for me, but it was really cute. It was a good four stars. And it made me really excited to read the next book, which is Boss Witch. It looks like this. Boss Witch is through Danica's cousin Clementine's perspective. And it kind of starts about halfway through the previous book because that's kind of where her story starts. Basically, a witch hunter comes into town. His name is Gavin, and he obviously is hunting witches. <laughs> it pinged on his radar that there's witches about in this area. Speaking of which, I love the town that this is set in. It's just so cute. I want to live there. Even though I have no desire to live in a small town in real life, Books like this make me want to live in a small town. <laughs> it's just so cute. But anyways, um, Gavin doesn't know who the witches are at the moment, but all the witches know about Gavin because he made it very apparent that he is a witch hunter on the hunt. He busted into Titus's bakery in the previous book, which is called Sugar Daddy's Bakery, super cute. Um, basically demanding where the witches are. And then Titus, of course, tells this to Danica, not because he thinks she's a witch, but just because it's like, whoa, this dude just like busted into my business acting all crazy. Um, so of course, Danica tells everyone. And now Clementine volunteered basically to help get rid of the witch hunter by basically distracting him until he got bored and figured that there were no witches around. So, so this book kind of turns into a fake dating kind of trope, lightly also kind of enemies to lovers. She doesn't want to be into him at all because obviously she's a witch and he's a witch hunter, but obviously they do end up falling for each other. It is a romantic comedy. Like, what do you expect? I don't feel like that's really spoilery. It happens fairly fast. Um, but yeah, we're kind of just navigating how this is going to work. She's like, I can't be with this person. What am I supposed to do? And even himself, like he doesn't think she's a witch, but he's supposed to be doing a job. Like he has the pressure of the other witch hunters to get this job done and he can't distract himself. He doesn't normally stick around in one place for too long, let alone get serious relationships going on. This is one of the elf putty bronzers, by the way. I haven't used this in a while, but I was feeling in a cream mood today. <laughs> and of course she's like, I can't be with him. Like he's a witch hunter. Like this is just supposed to be a distraction, but I'm really falling for him what's a girl to do. So we're basically navigating how that goes. You're learning a lot more about kind of the witch hunter lore, how it came about to where it is today. And it was really fun kind of going through that book. I also rated that one four stars, but I did like that one more than Witch Please. I feel like all three of these, I kind of liked a little bit more and more each book, but pretty much all of them, I just gave a solid four stars to. Um, and they all went really well together. I like that I don't know. I, I like these series where it's kind of the same story, but through a different character's perspective. The X Hex and Kiss Curse that I read in February was like that as well. And I really, really enjoyed that. I like that format a lot because you still get to be a part of the world, but you get to learn about something new. And that's, that's a fun time. But then I finished that book, obviously. I read these books pretty fast. Um, but after that, I started Extra Witchy, which was super fun. Again, I liked these more and more as the books went on. And that was my favorite. That one is through Leanne's perspective, who is in their coven. She works for like the city council. I think she does like PR or something for the mayor, but she ends up doing a lot more work than just PR. Like she's doing way more work than her job title suggests. Real quick, I'm gonna use one of Sigma's new cream blushes. This is in Corda Rosa. I'm so excited. I have not even swatched this yet. So I'm just gonna dive in and we're gonna see how it goes. But basically this book starts kind of towards the end of the first book, which please slash 
kind of the middle of the second book. Like they kind of overlap a little bit. At one point, Danica and Titus decide to have a big party kind of mixing their friend groups together. And that's where this book starts. Leanne has been married and divorced a couple times now. <laughs> I think she's been married two times. And Titus walks in with his friend Trevor, who's kind of been going through it, you know? He went through a bad breakup and then he's just been kind of living in his parents' basement, not really working, not really doing anything, kind of just getting high. Honestly, he's just going through it. It's it's not a great time for him. This blush is amazing, by the way. I'm obsessed. I'm never gonna use anything else ever again. <laughs> um, but he immediately catches Leanne's eye when he walks in. She approaches him and says, hey, how's it going? You wanna be my third husband? <laughs> Just kind of cheesy pickup line. He's nervous, but he's super flattered. Just like the other books, all three books kind of switch between both the main character and the love interest perspective. So when I get to Trevor's perspective, he's like super anxious and like, what does she see in me? Why is she approaching me? This doesn't make any sense. Like, why me? But they end up hooking up in the bathroom. It's a fun time. It's about to just be like a one night stand kind of thing for her. But of course, that's not how things are gonna go in this rom-com, obviously. She does find an attraction to him, but she also feels like she can use him to her advantage. She decides she wants to run for like actual city council and not just work for the members because she wants to actually get stuff done in her town properly. And she knows that she's probably gonna have a harder time with that because she is not with anyone and she's been divorced twice. Like she knows that her competitors are gonna kind of use that against her. So she's like, what if we pretend to be together? You can move in with me, we can stay together. It'll kind of look good for me. And then also for you, you can get out of your parents' house. And they both kind of agree that that's just a really good logical situation. He basically cooks and cleans for her while she works and they are together, but not. So definitely a fake dating kind of trope. It was super cute. I love a fake dating trope. I think that's one of my favorites. But of course, as you would assume, their interest for each other continues to grow and it turns into more than just fake dating, but neither of them are sure how to navigate that, especially because like the first book, Trevor's not a magical being, he's a mundane and she's a witch. So how is that supposed to work? There's just a whole lot going on. You're learning a lot about the city council stuff, not only in the real world, but also the magical world, because there is like a council of witches that's kind of keeping order and peace at bay during all of this. And she wants to make changes in that aspect as well. She's like, why can't witches and non-magical beings be together? I don't understand, like we're in a different time now. Spoiler alert for Boss Witch, the second book, so skip ahead if you are not wanting to be spoiled, but at the end of Boss Witch, you figure out that Basically, the witch hunters are basically suppressed witches. That's why they have these senses and they're very in tune to magic around them. So it's already turning into a thing where witch hunters can either be basically put in whatever magical prison <laughs> exists, or they can try to right their wrongs, kind of help witches that they've stolen the magic from, help them regain that again, and kind of become reformed witch hunters and turn into their actual witchy selves. So Leanne's kind of just like, if we can make this kind of progress, why can't we also let our loved ones who are non-magical a part of our lives? So kind of navigating all of that. It was a really fun time. There's a fourth book coming out, I think this year, and I'm super, super looking forward to it. I'm also super loving how my skin looks today. I've like never been happier. <laughs> Moving on before I get into freckles, the next book I read is Funny You Should Ask by Alyssa Sussman. I liked this book. It took me a little bit to get into it. I felt like I wasn't fully invested until about halfway through. It's basically about a reporter, or not really a reporter, but she's like, she writes puff pieces basically. And I think 10 years in the past, I could be misremembering that date. Her name is Chani, I might be pronouncing that wrong, but she has an interview with this celebrity movie star, Gabe. He is about to be the next like Bond in the Bond series. And it's kind of like a weekend long interview. And now 10 years later, they want them to kind of recreate that weekend long interview because he was kind of going through it. He dealt with a lot of alcoholism and is trying to kind of get back into the swing of things as far as the movie world goes. And they kind of just want that interview recreated just because it went so well publicity wise for everybody. So basically the book is kind of going back and forth between then and now. So each like segment will start with like the 
puff piece that she wrote about that particular day. So that first Friday, you're reading that puff piece that went out a decade ago. And then the chapter starts with the actual like event of Friday, which there's things that are similar, but obviously the puff piece isn't gonna be an exact matchup. So you're getting the real story of what happened and then it'll switch to the now. And it's like going over that Friday again and kind of what they're going through. There's mixtures of different excerpts of other bloggers and like movie reviews and critics and stuff like that about Gabe and the interview in general. And it was a fun time. Again, it wasn't my favorite one that I read. I think I did give it four stars on my Goodreads, but I think I would have probably given it like three and a half, but half stars aren't really a thing on Goodreads. Side note, I'm not really gonna give out my Goodreads. I kind of want that to be personal. I'll give you all the information here in my videos. But yeah, overall it was good, cute little rom-com. I did like how the story ended. And again, I did get pretty invested once it was about halfway through, but because I wasn't super invested until about halfway through, that's why I didn't want to give it more stars than that. And I know I'm not really giving a ton of information on this, but I feel like if I say too much, it'll spoil a lot, but I did like it. Do not get me wrong. There wasn't a single thing in March that I didn't like. I liked pretty much everything, but that probably was my least favorite one if I had to pick, just because it took me a little while to get into it. And then after that, I jumped on the Colleen Hoover train. I actually bought this book a few weeks prior to reading this, but finally got around to reading it. I read It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I loved that book. I thought it was fantastic. If you are someone who can't handle reading books relating to domestic violence and things like that, I would definitely say skip that one, but I really, really enjoyed it. This is Pink Star Highlighter from Odin's Eye. The main character is Lily. She's in her early 20s and she encounters Ryle while she is on top of technically his building that he lives in, but she was just hanging out up there one evening because she wanted to clear her mind. Her dad's funeral had just happened and she was just trying to kind of get away from everything and have an escape and that's where she meets Ryle originally. And of course they end up getting together later down the road. She decides to open up a flower shop that was always her dream. And this rich woman kind of wanders in and she's basically just like a bored rich woman. Like she doesn't have to work cause her husband makes a ton of money, but she's actually really cool. Like she's a great person. Um, and basically she wants to work for her. She's like, I love flowers. I feel like I could help you decorate the space really nicely. And they basically become besties, but turns out she is Ryle's sister. So that's how they reconnect again. They start getting more involved with each other's lives. And you're kind of watching Lily and Ryle's story unfold while also flashing back every so often. She's reading through her old journals from back when she was a teenager. Living at home, her father was abusive to her mother. So she grew up under that domestic violence kind of situation for a long time. And she also met Atticus that way. He was homeless. He was a couple years older than her, but still a teenager. I think he was 17. He might've been freshly 18, but he was young. Like he was still in high school. Um, and I think she was 15 to 16 at the time, but he's basically squatting in an abandoned house right behind her house. When she becomes aware of it, she starts kind of helping take care of him. She'll bring him food. She'll invite her in her house when her parents are away to like use their shower. And they start to form a really good connection. Once the winter happens, she lets him kind of sneak into her room and sleep in there. And it's just so pure and so sad. And so like it made my heart full of all the emotions, <laughs> good and bad. So it's kind of flashing back to that time in her teenagehood versus now with Ryle. And basically, obviously, if you don't want to be spoiled, don't continue watching, but I feel like it's kind of obvious with what the book is themed around. But Ryle does start showing abusive tendencies. Like he hits her at one point, he shoves her, he pushes her down the stairs. I say tendencies, it's more than that. Um, let me spray my face really quick. And she's becoming very aware of what's happening and also feeling really guilty because growing up, she was always mad that her mom wouldn't leave the situation that she was in. And now she's realizing how hard it is to leave these situations. Um, she ends up reconnecting with Atticus actually because he is the chef at a restaurant they visited a couple times. He notices at one point that she has like either a bandage or a bruise or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head exactly what's going on, but he basically like sneaks his number to her, asks to reach out if she ever needs it. Um, Ryle finds out about this eventually, loses his damn mind. Like he's 
insane. It was super awful. She ends up escaping, going to Atticus for help. Turns out she's pregnant with Ryle's baby. And then basically this whole book is just kind of themed around what she's going through growing up underneath a domestic abusive situation in her household, kind of going through it herself. And how is she going to break the cycle of that? So I thought it was really good. I think I gave this a solid five stars on my Goodreads. I probably would have given it like 4.5, but again, there's no half. So I just rounded up. I love the book. They are making a movie out of it and I hope it's good. I really hope it's good. I don't think it's coming out for a while though. And then after that, I read It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. This is a direct sequel continuation to It Ends With Us. It was really, really good. Obviously, if you didn't read It Ends With Us, skip this part because it's gonna be spoilery on It Ends With Us because I'm gonna be talking about It Starts With Us. But this one switches between Lily and Atticus's perspective. The end of It Ends With Us starts with her freshly having her baby, deciding to divorce Ryle because she wants to stop that cycle of abuse. And a couple months later, she runs into Atticus. She basically tells him like, yeah, I'm not with Ryle anymore. And there's a moment at the end of the first book where he's like comforting her and being super sweet. And that's kind of where this book starts. And it mostly just starts with her kind of freaking out internally. Like, what am I gonna do? Ryle's gonna freak out if he finds out I am with him. Um, but Atticus just wants nothing more than like the best for her, whether that means to be with her or not. He loves her so dearly and it's so sweet. And there's not like a ton of plot to this one other than the fact of like, how are we gonna make this relationship work? It's more so just kind of like, where are we now? Atticus ends up reconnecting with a long lost sibling that he didn't know existed. You learn a lot more about the background of Atticus and how he came to be homeless, how he came to get where he is in life now. And it was just a really, really good book. I found myself laughing out loud at certain parts. There are some really funny characters in this one. And overall, I just loved it. I thought it was a beautiful continuation of the first book and kind of just giving us almost more, just more info and more closure and more story on what they've been going through. I also gave that one a solid five stars. Again, I'd probably give it closer to like a 4.5, 4.75, something like that, but it was a perfect continuation to It Ends With Us. Before I move on, I'm gonna be using my Ace Butte Aura palette because I really want to use that fire liquid multi-chrome from ColourPop from that Cora collection. I think I'm mostly just gonna be using Chi, blend it out into Nimbus. So not really using a whole lot of shades here. I am having the funnest time just doing my makeup and chatting about these books. I really hope you guys end up liking this video because I feel like I'm in my element right now. This is so much fun. I feel like I'm just chatting with a friend. Even though I kind of always feel that way when I'm filming with you guys, that's just like heavily what it feels like right now. Moving on to the next book, I wanted to read Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. My friend Sophia is obsessed with that book and she was telling me how obsessed she is with it and she was mentioning that a new show was coming out which has already aired on Amazon Prime and completed at this point. Um, but I was like, I wanna read that too. Like I will take your advice and check it out. So. That's what I did, <laughs> I bought the book and I loved it. It's in kind of an interview style format. So it's basically about this band, Daisy Jones and the Six and kind of how they came to be. It's a fictional band, but man, they really make you think it's a real band. I'm pretty sure it's loosely based on Fleetwood Mac, which was super cool. And I really liked it. The interview style is taking place like years in the future, like years after everything went down and it's just kind of retelling the story through all the different characters' perspectives. It took me a little bit to kind of get used to the interview style format. I'm not used to reading stuff like that, but I really liked it once I kind of got used to the setup of it. I was really engrossed with the story. I really felt like I was watching an interview style like documentary about the band, even though I was reading it. It was really, really interesting. I love Daisy Jones. I think she is such a cool character. Really all the characters. I love them all so much, especially, oh my gosh, what's his name? Why am I blanking on his name? Warren. Warren is a precious angel and he deserves the absolute best in the world. But really all the characters, like they have their flaws, they have their issues. And I felt like that made them such great characters. And the show was amazing. Such a good book to show adaptation. The changes that there were between the book and the show were, I feel like really necessary and kind of pulled things together really well. I loved it. I really don't want to say too much other than the fact that Daisy Jones just starts on her own, like from teenagehood, just really dreaming about being 
a singer. Like she loves writing songs. She loves singing. Once she actually takes the plunge and starts performing on her own, she finds she just really loves that scene. And then the other band, The Six, it started out just them and kind of their upbringing and how they get to any level of fame. They end up doing a song and their manager decides to use Daisy Jones as like the featuring like special guest for the song. That song blows up. It's like top of the charts for a very long time. And then the manager's like, you need to come together. You need to write a whole album together. You, Billy, who's the singer of the six and Daisy. And they butt heads like crazy. Like they do not like each other at first at all. They're both just very strong personalities that are very opinionated and they like things done their way and they clash a lot, but they end up coming together, writing an amazing album, going on tour. But of course, there's lots of tension in the mix. There's issues with addiction and also just like what their families are going through back home, like Billy's wife, Camilla, who is an absolute queen. I loved her so much. I think she was my favorite character in the TV show adaptation. But just kind of going through all that and what leads up to what will end up being unexpectedly their very last show. And it was super good. The ending was pretty emotional and I just absolutely loved it. It was a fantastic book. I think I gave this four stars on my Goodreads. I didn't love it enough to give it like five stars, but I thought a four star was pretty solid. I was very invested and now I'm obsessed with the songs on Spotify. They're so good. I think it's so funny that this is like a fake band and now it's basically a real band because it was a TV show and like real songs had to be made. I also found out recently that the actress that plays Daisy Jones is Elvis's granddaughter, which is pretty darn cool. Next up, <laughs> can you believe we still have so many books to talk about? The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. I'm probably butchering that and I'm so sorry. Again, all the books will be linked down below for you. The book takes place through Micah Moon's perspective. She is a witch and in this society, witches are very secluded. They don't do a lot of things together because that's what they've always been taught keeps them safe. Also in this universe, when a witch has a daughter to another witch, I think it's to any other witch, yeah. Um, they end up dying, like both of the parents end up passing away. Like that's just how it goes. There's something going on with that. So basically every witch is an orphan. So it's kind of up to another witch to kind of take them under their wing and teach them and keep them safe, but from a distance because too many witches in one area might draw attention and it's a whole thing. Basically, Micah Moon, she's, she's young. She's like in her mid to late 20s, if I'm remembering correctly. She just makes like little TikTok videos about being a witch, but nobody thinks she's actually a witch because it's on TikTok, you know what I mean? Like everyone just assumes it's a persona, but this family, specifically one of the members of the family, he thinks that she is actually a witch and wants to recruit her for a special job over at their home. This family has acquired three witch children. They're around the ages of like, I wanna say one's around like six, one's around like eight or nine, and one's like 10 or 11, something like that. Like they're all pretty young. And they've been trying to take care of them, but they're gonna have this unexpected visitor coming by soon and they can't have them figuring out that they have witch children. <laughs> and none of these members of the household that are trying to help raise these children are witches at all. Like they're not magical beings of any sort, but they do obviously know that they can't get caught either. But the witches, as they're growing, their powers are super unstable. They don't really know how to control their power. So they need somebody to teach them. So they end up reaching out to Micah, recruiting her. She comes visits. She's very skeptical, obviously, because she's also always grown up under the impression that it's like, I can't be around here. Like, I can't help you guys. I don't know what you want from me. But of course, she ends up staying, helping take care of these children. I don't think I would typically love children in books, but these kids were really charming. They were super cute. I liked their stories and kind of how they came to be and what they're going through. And you really feel that bond between Micah and the children. It's really super sweet. And it's mostly just about how she's gonna help them control their powers, how they're gonna get out of this situation that they're in. I don't wanna give too many details because again, I'm trying to avoid spoilers in this uh, video, but 
overall I really liked it I think I gave it four stars on my Goodreads I probably would have given it more like a 3.5 but I did like it the story itself didn't like capture me as much as some of the other books I'm talking about but I did still really enjoy it I liked the world I liked how everything unfolded I liked the different nuances with this specific like witch situation and it was fun I really enjoyed it my memory card is filling up so let me do something about that and then we'll move on to the next book this multi-chrome is really pretty I feel like that blended out onto the eyes really really nicely I think it's cute um but moving on the next book I read was a witch's guide to fake dating a demon by Sarah Holly fake dating trope obviously it's in the name this is through the witch Mariel's perspective as well as the demon Osroth and basically Mariel's been kind of pushed her whole life to basically be a better witch she comes from a very powerful witch family and her mom like got some crazy prophecy when she was born that she was going to be destined for all these cool things and be amazing and she's just not catching on to the same type of magic that her mother does and that's like a huge issue it's like this huge rift she is constantly being told how bad she is and she should do better and all these nonsensical things where Mariel's actually really good with plants. Like she's really good at plant magic. She can heal everything and grow everything. Her mom thinks that's all nonsense, of course, but basically that's kind of the background of it. She ends up deciding to practice a little bit. She's trying to just like bake something and she tries to summon flour, I think is what it was. And then she accidentally summons Osroth the demon. And what happens when you summon a demon? It means that you are in a binding contract basically where the demon will do anything that you ask in exchange for your soul which makes you basically emotionless and magicless you just become this very blank person after that so she's stuck in this situation he's also stuck in this situation because he can't leave until she makes a deal with him not to mention he also has recently gone through a situation where he went to get somebody's soul who was making a deal with him but he, they ended up doing some kind of magic to make it so that the soul ends up in Osroth. so now he's feeling human emotions that he didn't used to feel before and yeah it turns into a whole thing mariel ends up deciding out of nowhere that they are just going to pretend to date because there's no other explanation for why he's here. Her mother just shows up unannounced right after he appears. So it just kind of turns into a, this is my boyfriend. Yeah. So it turns into this big fake dating thing. Of course, they end up getting involved and kind of falling for each other, even though they're not supposed to. There's lots of push and pull with that. There's also a lot of drama going on with the actual human world as well. The forest is dying that kind of has a lot of the ley lines to keep the magic flowing in the society and it's like a whole thing trying to figure out what's going on with that i love the sound of the town they live in too it sounds so cute and also in this world magical beings live amongst the humans freely and not even just witches it's like all kinds of magical things like one of her best friends is a pixie there's like centaurs and like all these different magical beings everywhere so i thought that was pretty cool too overall it was a super fun story kind of just seeing how things are going to progress between osroth and mariel and finding the solutions to what's going on with her forest and stuff like that and even just like the tension between her and her family it was a fun time there is another book of this coming out at some point i think this year and that one's gonna be through the perspective of her best friend, whose name I'm forgetting, Caladia. It'll be through her best friend Caladia's perspective and then one of the other demons. And I'm interested in seeing how that book goes. I think I gave this one also a solid four stars on my Goodreads. Like I said, I've read some pretty good books last month. I wasn't disappointed with any of them. We have four more books to go. Next is The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I've been wanting to read this for such a long time. It was super fun. It's paying homage to a lot of the classic final girls in old slasher films and stuff like that. And it's kind of just like, where are they now? What are they up to? How are they coping with what they're going through? It goes through the perspective of Lynette, who's one of the final girls and kind of what she's going through. She ends up getting not even just suspicion, but like complete validation that somebody is out to get them. One of the final girls ends up dying unexpectedly. And there's just lots of crazy shady things going on. And she 
is trying to warn the other girls. They all think she's crazy. And it's just really fun kind of going through this whole, I guess thriller is what I would describe it as, kind of unraveling the mystery of what's happening with them, who is responsible, reading all that go down. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything. I feel like if I say too much about this particular book, it'll spoil stuff. But if you like horror movies, you would love that book. It was a lot of fun. I want to read more Grady Hendrix books. I have the Guide to Slaying Vampires book on my TBR. Well, I don't own it yet. It's on my wish list, I suppose. And also the My Best Friend's Exorcism. Really, really enjoyed it. I think I gave that one four stars as well. I probably would have given it more of like a... 3.75 if I had to like be specific, but I did really, really enjoy it. I thought it was a fun time. I found some moments to be a little slow. I didn't even curl these lashes. I'm like, why are these ones like so flat? <laughs> this is what happens when I do mascara and talk. I never do this part on camera. Um, whoopsie. But I found some parts to be a little bit slow and maybe that's why I didn't rank it a little bit higher, but overall I really liked it. I thought it was a fun time and I now wanna read more of the books. Oh, I just got mascara all over my lid. <laughs> <laughs> what a mess. I'm so dumb. I should have let that dry first. I'll fix it. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to let that dry completely and then I'll go over it with a little more shadow and it'll be fine. Just, just ignore it for now. I'm a mess. It's fine. Next up, I read Verity by Colleen Hoover. I read this in literally like four hours last week. I loved it. It was such a good thriller kind of mystery because you're kind of trying to unravel what went on with Verity. The story is told through Lowen's perspective. She is an author, but she likes to be fairly underground and unnoticed. She doesn't like big press and celebrity nonsense. Like she doesn't want to go on book tours or anything like that. She's kind of a low key and very broke writer. <laughs> she ends up having this meeting with Verity, who is a very popular writer with her husband and her like PR team. Jeremy, who's the husband, he's kind of talking to her after the meeting and basically like Verity was in a horrible accident and she's just basically never gonna be able to write again. And there's supposed to be three more books in the series that she already started. So they're basically looking for a ghost writer who they can advertise as being a co-author for the remaining three books. And they think that she would be a really good fit um, she's hesitant at first, obviously, because she's not used to this level of book writing because <laughs> it's a very popular, very famous series that she'd be working on. Um, but she ends up agreeing and she's basically encouraged to go to the Crawford household and go through all of her old notes and outlines. It's an absolute mess in her office. There's just papers everywhere, like there's nothing organized. So she's gonna spend a good couple weeks going through all of these notes. And while looking through these notes, she ends up finding this manuscript that Verity wrote as an autobiography. The autobiography basically just starts from the moment that she meets uh, Jeremy up until the moment of her accident. And she's reading through all of that and there is so much awful things that go on in this manuscript. She doesn't know what to think of it. She doesn't know what to think about Verity, who is basically a vegetable upstairs, like needing constant care from a nurse and her husband going through the tragicness of her two twin daughters dying. And it is just a roller coaster. It was such a page turner. I got through it so fast. Zane's actually reading it currently. He's that far in, <laughs> that's his bookmark. I was like, Zane, please read this book. Please, please, please read this book because I want to discuss it so bad, but I don't want to tell you anything because I want you to like, go through the experience yourself. And now I do want to discuss the ending a little bit. So spoilers, if you have not read this book, please skip ahead because I don't want you to know any of this if you haven't read the book yet. But what do you guys think who have read it? Do you think the manuscript was true? Or do you think her notes that they found after they moved out confessing that the manuscript was all a fake and it was just a writing experiment? Like, what do you believe? I personally do not believe that like notes at all. Like the manuscripts, like, I don't care what kind of writing experiment you're doing. I just can't imagine writing such vulgar things about your own children and family. Like it was just absolutely sick. And then on top of the fact that she was faking her illness the whole time, like she wasn't actually a vegetable, like she was just faking it. Nobody does that. That is psychotic. I don't believe that note for a second. I think that was just kind of a last ditch effort to kind of try to get away with things, even though obviously she died, so it didn't work out. Um, 
Yeah, I don't believe it for a second, but I would love to hear your thoughts because it's a very open-ended ending and I would just love to know how like you guys perceived it for those of you who read it. Spoilers are over now. <laughs> um, but I gave this one a solid five stars. I feel like I had to just with how much of an impression it made on me with how fast I read it and how badly I wanted Zane to read it. So solid five stars. I would love for this to become a TV show or movie someday. Two more books and we will go over those while I, I guess just sit here and maybe do my lips. <laughs> I picked up this book. It's called Shady Hollow. It's a murder mystery by Juno Black. I bought this specifically because I do judge a book by its cover and this is the cutest thing in the world. This is in the town Shady Hollow. All of the characters are little woodland critters who kind of live together in harmony. In my mind, I think of it more like kind of Fantastic Mr. Fox, how it's like a bunch of little animals kind of doing human things like working jobs and living lives and living in houses and things like that. It is the cutest thing ever. If a murder mystery can be cute and cozy and wholesome, that is exactly what this book is. It was just like a warm hug. I loved it. It is through the perspective of Vera Vixen. She is an investigative reporter and she's a fox, if that wasn't clear. And basically there's been a murder in their town. So she starts to investigate and it was so fun kind of going through, getting to know all the different characters. I never once felt like I wasn't in this town and amongst the woodland critters. Like this author does such a good job at really keeping you engaged with the fact that these are animals, but in a very, I don't know, it was such a wholesome book. I loved it. And I just loved the mystery unfolding and figuring out who, who done it at the end of the book. I thought it was so, so cute. There are two other books in this series that I wanna pick up at some point. There's also a short book, like a short story. It's only like 50 pages long. It's like a, winter solstice theme book. So I'm sure I will read that closer to winter. Um, but yeah, loved that book. I think I gave this one a solid four stars also. Um, again, if I had to be picky, I'd probably give it like 3.75 maybe. Um, but it was really cute. It was just such a wholesome, cozy read. And it was a really short book. Like it wasn't even 300 pages. So um, I recommend if you need just like a cute, cozy book. And I truly thought that was gonna be the last book that I read in March, but I ended up reading one more before the month ended. I decided to start the Crave series by Tracy Wolf. I've been dying to read these books because I've heard that these are basically the new generation's Twilight. And I was like, I would love to live my vampire fantasy again. Thank you very much. It goes through the perspective of Grace. Her parents recently died, unfortunately. And then she ends up going to stay at her uncle's school that he is like the headmaster of, Catmere Academy. Her cousin Macy goes to school there as well. And it's kind of the only family she has left. So it's like, where else am I gonna go? She's 17. She has like one more semester of school left before she's done. So it's like, let's just go get this out of the way. She quickly finds out it is a, an experience to say the least. It is a full on castle and she doesn't know it yet, but it's literally full of monsters. And I don't feel like that's spoilers because it's kind of obvious based on the theme and like the descriptions and stuff like that. She meets Jackson who is a vampire. And again, not spoilers because it literally says it on the, the description flap. And it's pretty obvious that he's a vampire just from the descriptions himself. And I mean, the cover, that, that's not a spoiler. You know you're getting into a vampire book when you read this. Basically, she keeps getting attacked and it's like, what is causing this? Who is causing this? There's this huge battle at the end between certain characters and there's sacrifice involved. And there's a lot of backstory with Jackson and his brother. And I really don't wanna to say too much because I feel like it's such a fun world to read through. I found myself laughing out loud during certain parts. Nothing spicy about this book. This one's very like YA in my opinion, at least so far. I'm on the second book now. Maybe they get spicier as things go on. I will report back <laughs> next month, but it was just a fun like, fantasy vibe. Lots of character development. I loved getting to know all these different characters. And if you're into vampires or just wanna like delve into something fantasy, I, I'm i liking it so far and I'm excited to read the others. I have all the other ones ready to go. I'm going to keep working on the second one currently and hopefully finish it very soon. Oh, I guess I forgot to mention just for the spice meter, but the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches and A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon, um, they also have some spice to them, just so you know. Um, it doesn't really bother me. I don't mind some spice, especially when it's in a romantic comedy, but just so you know what you're getting into. Um, but I need to do my lips. I'm gonna do my lips and then <laughs> we will finish up this video. All right, here we are, final look. I ended up just throwing a little lip oil on. I threw the Blend Bunny Tease pencil just kind of around the center just to give a little definition. And then I threw the Tint Sigma lip oil on top 
just something kind of soft and easy. I didn't want anything too crazy. I also realized I didn't uh, finish chatting about Crave. I feel like I gave this one four stars. Now I don't remember what I rated it. Let me, let me check really quick. Yeah, I gave that one a solid four stars. I'd maybe give it like 4.25, but I, I just gave it four. And also I guess I technically did rank Shady Hollow as three, but Again, maybe closer to 3.5 is what I would have given it. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had so much fun just kind of getting lost in the makeup and the books and just chatting. I truly felt like I was hanging out with you for real in this video and it was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to reading more books in April. I'm mostly gonna be attacking the Crave series. I'm hoping to finish it honestly within like two weeks. I'd like to have the other four books done. I'm like a quarter of the way through the second book right now. And I have a tattoo appointment today. So I'll read a lot of that book during that appointment. Um, and then I have a lot of books on my shelf that I have ready to go. I have the Kingdom of the Cursed. Is that what it's called? Kingdom of the Wicked. Kingdom of the Cursed, I think is the second one um, by Carrie Maniscalco. It looks like this. It looks like that. Um, but I have that one. I have Things We Never Got Over, which is by Lucy Score. I'm super excited to read that one. And I also have Beach Read by Emily Henry. But that one I'm trying to wait until it gets to be a little bit more summertime-esque. Because even though I don't love the summer, I want to have books that make me feel like I like the summer. So I have a few books on my want to read list for that later. But as always, thank you so much for hanging out and watching this video. I really appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I had such a fun time. And again, I would love to hear if you've read any of these books, if you want to read any of these books, what have you been reading lately? I would love to chat down below. If you made it to the end of this video, why don't you leave some book emojis? And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel out a lot. And if you haven't already, you can subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. I post most days here as well. And again, like I mentioned in the intro, I do have a membership now. If you want to subscribe, you will get some custom emojis and also an exclusive members only video every month. You can also follow me on my Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. It is Baddie Bean everywhere, and I look forward to hanging out with you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, bye. I feel like my heart is racing just because this was like exhilarating <laughs> to talk about all of these. I can't believe I read 13 books. I don't think that's going to happen again next month just because the Crave books are a lot thicker. Um, but I'm excited just to see what I get accomplished. I remember my original goal for this year when I wanted to get back into reading was I think six books. I was like, I can do a book every other month. I have blown past that goal. I think I've already read 16 total. <laughs>